the tragedy is that many people in Britain do not understand the origins of the European community. They think, because this is what they've been told, it was just about trade. It wasn't. Actually, the European community started in response to war. The most devastating war the world had ever known. The second of two world wars that originated on our continent of Europe. A war in which around 60 million people were killed and a new word, genocide, had to be invented to describe the indescribable, which was the systematic and industrial murder of many millions of people. So when peace came at last, after five gruelling years of war, there were two words that resonated across our continent of Europe and the world. Never again, never again. And some of the greatest minds and most compassionate souls thought up initiatives in this post-war period to try and avoid something like this happening again because it was like we had lost humanity. And we started the United Nations, the International Court of Justice, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the European Convention on Human Rights, the European Court of Human Rights, NATO, and the European Coal and Steel Community, later to become the European Economic Community, and later to be called the European Union. All of these post-war initiatives were started for the same reason, to try and create peace and security and humanity after the most devastating war the planet had ever known. And in particular, our war leader, Churchill, great war leader, in the immediate post-war years, set his mind to thinking what would be the antidote to war on a continent that was infamous for its countries resolving differences between each other by violence and war. What was his answer to that? We must recreate the European family in a regional structure called, it may be, the United States of Europe. And the first practical step would be to form a Council of Europe. If at first all the states of Europe are not willing or able to join the Union, we must nevertheless proceed to assemble and combine those who will and those who can. So it was Churchill's idea, among others, to have a Union of Europe as a whole. He is recognized as one of the 11 founders of today's European Union. And although at that particular time, he didn't envisage Britain being a member, he was later to change his mind. We cannot aim at anything less than the Union of Europe as a whole. And we look forward with confidence to the day when that union will be achieved. And so it came about on the 25th of March, 1957. Six countries came together. France, Italy, West Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg to create the European Economic Community. This was a remarkable achievement when you consider that these countries just a few years earlier were at war. And one of these countries had subjugated most of the others in a terrible way. For them to get together so quickly after the Second World War is a big achievement and the reason they did it was not for trade. Trade was the means, but the goal was peace, peace on our continent. And in 1961, under the Tory premiership of Harold Macmillan, we applied to join the European community. And he told the country at the time, in renouncing some of our own sovereignty, we would receive in return a share of the sovereignty renounced by other members. We were not misled. Messieurs, nous procéder à la signature des actes. And then, in 1972, Tory Prime Minister Edward Heath signed the EEC Treaty of Accession following six days of debate in Parliament. And then, 
we were in. 1st of January 1973, we had joined. And notice the headlines in the newspapers then, who in the main were all pro our being in the European community. And then, in 1975, Prime Minister Harold Wilson, the Labour Prime Minister, decided to have a referendum similar to the one we had in 2016. Did Britain want to stay in the European community that we had only just joined a couple of years previously? And at the time, the Labour government sent a pamphlet to every household and said that the first aims of the common market were to bring together the peoples of Europe, to raise living standards, and to maintain peace. And at the time, the leader of the Conservative Party, the opposition, Margaret Thatcher, she agreed. And she said it's purely common sense to belong to a community working together in peace on economic and political issues that concern us all. Again, this is beyond just free trade. The result was overwhelming. Unlike in 2016, in 1975, UK voted to remain in the European community by a massive two to one. The issue was settled. The British people, in clear and unmistakable terms, have made their historic decision that Britain shall remain a member of the European community. Their verdict has been given by a vote and by a majority bigger than that achieved by any government in any general election in the history of our democracy. The European community, now the European Union, has been a remarkable success story. It's grown from its original six members to 28, with more wanting to join. And it's achieved its original aim of peace between members, because never has a, f a shot been fired between a European Union country. The European Union is the world's largest economic region, the world's largest trading bloc, the world's largest exporter and importer of manufactured goods and services, and the list goes on. Before we joined the European community, we were known as the sick man of Europe. Our inflation and unemployment was high, and the countries of Europe were doing better than us. We wanted to join for the economic survival of our country because our empire was finished and our commonwealth was severely diminished. For most of the 40 odd years that Britain has been in the European Union, people were not against our membership. The vast majority supported our membership and our continued membership of the European Union. And why not? It was a success story and Britain was doing well. But following the 2016 referendum, in which a slim margin voted for leave, Britain left the European Union on 31st of January 2020. Maybe one day, Britain will want to rejoin the EU for the same reasons we joined in the first place. Peace, prosperity, security and a say in Europe.